Maya, is there anything you've seen happen today on Capitol Hill that would make that 80% potentially a little bit lower? Is there maybe a 50% chance? Is there a chance we stay open this weekend? And I'm talking about the federal government. Well, I'll tell you that this experts poll, which is about 100 budget experts, I'm always the most optimistic person who answers. So I'm not at 87%. I still think there's a chance. But I do think oh. we are at the point where the timing just doesn't work. So I'm going to shift it from that. I think there's a chance we don't shut down. I think that's awfully likely. And clearly uh, the recipient, the, the, the folk, the participants in the poll do. But I think there's a decent chance that it's a very short shutdown and that it's just a small bridge till they come up with the answer. But I will say, and you were referring before how Goldman Sachs is saying they predict a longer shutdown. I think if we go a few Two days, three weeks. Yeah, I think if we go a few days, we go a few weeks. Because what I can't game out is what's the end game for a shutdown that they wouldn't just go ahead and do now if it were understood. And there's been so many discussions and so many gaming out. I'm not sure how it gets any easier once we shut down unless they're just close and need a few extra hours. Well, your optimism is uh, is noteworthy, Maya. So so take us for a walk here. What's the best case scenario? Would it be, in fact, that Senate continuing resolution that might be embraced by House Republicans? Because we keep hearing that that's DOA and the CR they're working on in the House would never be accepted in the Senate. Yeah, I think the CR that's in the House is not going to fly in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And I think the Senate's CR would only work in the House if there's something else that is also a part of this discussion that makes the folks who are holding out in the House believe that in the discussion about funding the government and in the coming months, there is something that will allow them to focus on the fiscal problems of the country. Keep in mind, they've been saying what they think is the spending is too high, um, but they haven't really made a clear ask. This is very, very different than when we had the debt ceiling showdown, because what the House did is they came up with an ask early. It was an ask that made sense. It was consistent, and they were able to negotiate from a, situa from, from a position of power that doesn't exist right now because they don't know what they're asking for. And so I think if you have a very short-term CR, just flat, that allows you to figure out how you actually put in place a mechanism to fund the government. We already decided what those levels should be, so it shouldn't be so hard. But I think what needs to be added is something that will make clear that we are also going to then pivot turn our attention on to dealing with the fiscal problems that go well beyond this tiny slice of the budget that the debt ceiling deal focused on. Well, we spoke with Senator John Hickenlooper of Colorado today, who voiced his frustration with Republican tactics. Take a listen. The issue was the budget, it was excess spending. Now suddenly the issue turns out to be about the border, issues at the border. I mean, this is, you don't just get to bring outside issues. We're trying to make a budget. So, uh, you know, I would never put myself in the president's place, nor would I ever advise him what to do. But I can certainly see the, the problems with, you know, opening a negotiation at this late date and, and discussing things that have nothing to do with the budget. Maya, just quickly, if you can also explain to our audience the difference between a budget and appropriation bills, because everyone talks about we have to get this budget done, but... Anyone could basically put out a budget, right? The president puts out a budget. You have members of Congress. The uh, Republican Party has put out a, their version of what they'd like to see. But this is appropriation. This is fiscal spending. Isn't that what the Senate and the House, by the end of the year, are actually trying to get done to make sure that each chamber has 12 of these spending bills done? Thank you. Great question, because it gets really confused. Yeah, you would think anybody can put out a budget, and they should. That said... The Senate Budget Committee actually failed to put out a budget this year, which, given all that's going on, makes no sense at all. The House's budget was way too late, but they should have both put them out on time, and the House at least put theirs out, and then they should have negotiated an overall framework. We don't have budgets more years than we do. That already is a problem. But then you get to this point that there is a deadline every year, and it is not a surprise. We know that the end of September is the end of the fiscal year, by which the government has to be funded those appropriations bills have to be passed. It hasn't happened on time in many, many years. And so the, the real realization is that our budget process isn't working. We don't pass budgets and we don't fund the government on time. And government shut down, which is the result of not putting in place a continuing resolution to keep the government funded, is just an advertisement of absolute 
chaotic uh, inability to govern. And so I think what they need to do is focus on not only fixing the fiscal problems for sure, but also overhauling this budget process that is so broken. The House, uh, the House Budget Committee, and and I think this, yeah, the House Budget Committee has said they are very focused on doing budget process reforms. I think that could play a critical role in all of this, so we don't go through this every year going forward. Well, it sure does seem broken, Maya. But of course, Kevin McCarthy promised when he got the gavel as Speaker, promised a return to regular order. Does the committee at this point see Kevin McCarthy as a credible player in this saga? I mean, I actually I do think he's a credible player in that he is trying to figure out how to do the right thing of keep the government on open, keep the government funded. He is managing a lot of different interests. I guess what I think is the problem is the whole focus on the majority of the majority. We really just need to get to do the majority of our lawmakers in the democratic process support something. And the majority of the lawmakers do support funding the government and keeping it open. So it's when this becomes so partisan and focusing just on what Republicans want or Democrats want instead of Congress wants, that's no longer working. Uh, with regard to regular order, of course, that's how we should be doing things. All of this work should be done in the committees. All of the funding, given that there was funding levels, we should have been keeping to the funding levels that were agreed upon in the debt ceiling deal. I will point out the Senate that passed their appropriations also busted through the caps they were supposed to have and passed bills at $14 billion above the agreed upon caps. Meanwhile, the House wants to go, go below them. So another piece of this is yeah, once you put a deal in place, you actually have to stick to it. A deal's a deal, and we're not seeing anyone abide by that. But the whole thing's broken. It is time for a pretty major overhaul of the system on the process. But more importantly, can we please focus on the fact that our debt is out of control? We are talking about tiny slices of the budget, and our deficit is about to hit $2 trillion.